commenting with Google Plus sucks. But commenting with Reddit is awesome. So head on over to Reddit and leave a comment on this video. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Hey there! You're watching the Jessa channel on YouTube. I'm Jessa, and today I am here back in Skyrim with Mala, Inigo, and Joran. And we are heading up to Riverwood. And the last episode, we didn't actually get very far because Mala was attacked by a this dragon, a frost dragon. Beasts. I think someone like that and then a thief of all people tried to rob her. So she dispatched of that thief quickly and as a result gained a uh, a nice new bit of armor from that thief and we are now heading on up to riverwood the past two episodes and this episode all the episodes i've recorded in this session i am using the new skyrim memory patch which was discovered and created by I love that uh, elk and I don't like to disrupt him. Anyway, which was created by uh, C. Sean, uh, she Son, I should say, S-H-E-S-O-N, uh, and over at the EMB uh, development forums. And it, this memory patch has been reported by many, many people to be really good for stopping uh, infinite loading screens and crashes to desktop. I've been playing with it uh, and ah, there's Durek. That's the Dawnguard NPC which you can talk whom you can speak to to uh, with whom you can speak to join Dawnguard. And Get some water there. But anyway, uh, it has been rumored to stop uh, crashing and, and infinite loading screens. And my experience with it has been really good. Really good. It has not... I had one crash with the mod in. Um, and I haven't had one since then. And none so far since I... Uh, since... <laughs> Let's say that again. None so far uh, while I've been uh, recording. Oh, I meant to give him the raw one. Anyway, <laughs> so Joran has been fed, so I think it's time to go on in and see if we can't find Delphine. Continue on with the main is quest. This just me, or is this guy bigger here? <laughs> Good day. Mala's always one to be polite, at least when she's not irritated. <laughs> Good day. Good day, gentlemen. Ah, you are the bard. Feindal thinks he can woo Camilla Valerius away from me. She's already mine, I keep telling him. Smells like still. Well, I will leave you to... <laughs> to take care of that matter on your own. But uh, I'd like to make a request. Sure. What can I do for you? Uh, let's sing the Age of Aggression. Only true Imperials request that one. <laughs> I don't know if I'm this a true Imperial. This is a code to Skyrim's staunch protectors, the Imperials. We drink to our youth, to days come and gone, for the Age of Aggression. I have a mod in, um, and my mod list is available over at, uh, my website, which is thejessachannel.com. But, uh, I have a mod list which allows it so that bards don't play all the time. Um, they take breaks and they often play different things besides those same two songs. And, um, and then of course you can as usual make a request. So that's why he was on a break right then and not playing. And it has saved my sanity. And Mala's probably as well too. Excuse me, is, uh, is Delphine in? We got rooms and food. Drink, too. I cook. Ain't much else to tell. Well, 
I will look around for her. Thank right, you. Then. Also, a viewer recommended to me, a wonderful viewer gave me a message, sent me a message and said, um, hey, Jessa, you know, there's a, such a, you know, I know that Mala likes to uh, take showers and baths. And so there's a mod called, um, I think it's called Bathing Beauties in Skyrim, or Bathing Bath, something like that. But anyway, um, I do have a mod in which puts showers into, I'll just open it up so you can see it, that puts showers and a bath into all the rooms, all the ends, I should say, in Skyrim. So this is what I was using, Mala was using before, while she's on her travels, and before she got Breeze home with her own bathroom in it, so. But I want to thank the viewer for, who uh, sent me that uh, information, and I do appreciate when you guys send me uh, mods and, and let me know about things that could be taken care of. Perhaps she is in her little secret area, which I can see is not very secret anymore. Daphine? Daphine? Da you made oh. it out alive, at least. Your gear is safe in my room, as promised. Did you learn anything useful? Yes, I learned... Oh, dear. I'm going to tab out of this conversation real quick, um, because I forgot something. And that is, I forgot to read the dossier on uh, that we found at the Thalmor Embassy, and those are important for moving the story along. And, I, you know, I don't want her to take them from us before we... I don't know if she's going to take them. But take them from us, um, you know, before we get a chance to uh, read them. So let's do that right now. Let's see how many pages this is. Woo! Not too bad. So this might be an episode where we read a lot. Um, so this is Esburn. And I don't know who Esburn is, but actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to scan this and uh, point out any relevant relevant points. And you can read it by pausing the video and reading through if you want to. Um, but it says here that Esburn was one of the Blade lore masters prior to the first war against the Empire. He was not a field agent, but is now believed to be behind some of the most damaging operations carried out by the Blades, of which Delphine is one, during the pre-war years. His file had remained dormant for many years. And <laughs> uh, it was in, in the erroneous belief that he was unlikely to pose a threat due to his advanced age and lack of field experience. Um, operational notes. We are still in the dark as to the cause and the meaning of the return of the dragons. That's important. So it, it means that the Thalmor are not behind the return of the dragons, at least according to this. Uh, I have made capturing Esburn our top priority as he is known to be one of the experts in the dragon lore of the Blades. Now, we have not met Esburn yet. Um, I don't... No, we have not. But Etienne, who unfortunately was killed while Mala was trying to take over the embassy and he accidentally got in the line of, of battle and was and was uh, his life was lost and that's what Mala is so upset about. Um, he, they were questioning him, trying to get him to give information about Esbern, and the most that we were able to figure out was that Esbern may be in Riften, so we may be heading there. Uh, anyway, he's one, he's known to be one of the ex experts in the dragon lore of the Blades. Uh, regrettably, we have yet to match their expertise on the subject of dragons. Let's see here. Um, the archives of the Cloud Ruler Temple, which is believed to have been the primary repository of the oldest Blades lore, were largely destroyed. So, I wonder if we'll be going to that. Thus, Esburn remains our best opportunity to learn how and why the dragons have returned. Um, we have recently received solid information that Esburn is still alive and hiding somewhere in Riften. There you go. Um, interrogation of a possible witness is ongoing. That's the witness that we saved. And so, um, he must not be given an opportunity to flee. So that means that they're going to be heading to Riften and we'll need to, to, to sort of take them off at the, cut them off the pass let's uh check out this one on delphine status is active they can capture or kill her she's a high priority she's female breton mid 50s delphine was a high priority target during the first war both for operational and political reasons she was directly involved in several of the most damaging operations carried out within by the blades um 
says dear down the bottom that she uh, evaded three attempts on her life, in one case killing an entire assassination team. So she's not to be messed with. Uh, since then, we only have indirect evidence of her movement, so they don't know that she is uh, here in Riverwood. She is believed to still be working actively against us within Skyrim, though we have no location on her. Um, let's see. She has in the past avoided contact with other fugitive blades for her own security. One of the reasons she has so far evaded elimination. I hate the words they use. Um, so that's not too much information on her. Overwhelming force and the most careful preparation. I love it. She'll kick our butts. <laughs> and let's see what it has to say about Ulf Ulfric Stormcloak. This is the Thalmor notes on Ulfric Stormcloak. He's dormant, uncooperative. <laughs> He's an asset. Huh. Jarl of Windhelm, leader of the Stormcloak Rebellion. Interesting. Ulfric first came to our attention during the first war against the Empire, when he was taken as a prisoner of war during the campaign for the White Gold Tower. Under interrogation, we learned of his potential value as a son of the Jarl of Windhelm. He was assigned as an asset to the interrogator, who is now First Emissary Ellen Wynn. Ooh, interesting. Um... He was made to believe information obtained during his interrogation was crucial in the capture of the Imperial City. The city had in fact fallen before he had broken. Oh, so, oh, interesting. So Ulfric gave information to the Thalmor. Hmm. After the war, contact was established and he has proven his worth as an asset. The so-called Markarth incident was particularly valuable. Interesting. The Markarth incident was uh, basically uh, Ulfric went down from what I know about it. Ulfric went down and attempted to uh, take over um, Markath and uh, eradicate the... Oh, I do forget the people down there and, and Mark, uh, Markarth. You have to remind me. Forsworn, the Forsworn. Um, operational notes. Let's see here. Direct contact remains a possibility under extreme circumstances. Um... As long as the Civil War proceeds in its current indecisive fashion, we should remain hands off. That's interesting. That's the first thing that is Mala has come across that has given her reason to consider being getting involved in the Civil War. Uh, her mindset around it up until now has been, it's not my problem, and I don't really understand what they're even fighting about or for. I know they're fighting for Skyrim, but, you know. Um... And since she doesn't consider herself to be part of the Empire, uh, really, and came from another land um, and landed here in Skyrim, her, her, she doesn't have a loyalty towards Skyrim, but her experience is more of a Skyrim. Uh, the incident at Helgen is an example where an exception had to be made. Obviously, Ulfric's death would have dramatically increased the chance of an Imperial victory and thus harmed our overall position in Skyrim. Note, this is important, the coincidental intervention of the dragon at Helgen is still under scrutiny. That means the Thalmor don't know what was going on. The obvious conclusion is that whoever is behind the dragons also has an interest in the continuation of the war. But we should not assume, therefore, that their goals align with our own. Your goals are to be a bunch of buttheads. That's your goal. <laughs> um... And then lastly, this dragon investigation is really important. So let's read that real quick. First Emissary Elenwyn. And Elenwyn was is the ambassador, uh, the Thalmor ambassador. We anticipate a breakthrough in our efforts to uncover the party or power behind the dragon resurrection, resurrection phenomenon. An informant has identified a possible lead whom we have brought back to the embassy for a full interrogation. The subject is obstinate, but by all indications is holding back the information we seek. I have authorized immediate manual uncoiling. What the heck is that? Please let me know in the comments over at Reddit at reddit.com forward slash r forward slash the Jessa channel. What the heck that is? What is manual uncoiling? It sounds extremely painful. <laughs> oh. 
Um, I do not expect more will be necessary unless you feel time presses. If you prefer to be present at the final questioning, I will inform you immediately when the subject is fully receptive. In the meantime, if you wish to audit our technique, your expertise is welcome as always. Yeah, your technique is hit him in the head. And this is signed Rulin Dill, third emissary. Um, so uh, Rulin Dill is dead because Mala stuck a javelin in the back of his head. Unfortunate for him. And who cares? <laughs> okay, so that's all the information on the uh, storyline. So let's go back and talk to Delphine. If we can here. Give me a... There we go. Stop. Did you learn anything useful? <laughs> the Thalmor. I have read all of the documents. And they don't know anything about the dragons. Really? That seems hard to believe. You're sure about that? <laughs> I am sure. They are looking for someone called Esburn. They are as clueless about the dragons as we are at this moment. They actually do not even know why the dragons freed Ulfric in Helgen. Esburn? He's alive? I thought the Thalmor must have got him years ago. That crazy old man. Figures the Thalmor would be on his trail, though, if they were trying to find out what's going on with the dragons. Yes, but I don't understand. What would the Thalmor want with Esbern? They must want him pretty badly, as they were torturing a man named Etienne in order to get information about him. Unfortunately, Etienne died in the attempt to free him. You mean aside from wanting to kill every blade they can lay their hands on? Esbern was one of the blade's archivists back before the Thalmor smashed us during the Great nice War. He knew everything about the ancient dragon lore of the Blades. Obsessed with it, really. Nobody paid much attention back then. I guess he wasn't as crazy as we all thought. They seem to think that he's hiding out in Riften. I intend to go there. I have other matters to take care of as well. Riften, eh? Probably down in the Ratway, then. It's where I'd go. You'd better get to Riften. Talk to Brynjolf. He's well-connected. A good starting point, at least. Oh, and when you find Esbern, if you think I'm paranoid, you may have some trouble getting him to trust you. Just ask him where he was on the 30th of Frostfall. You'll know what it means. I wonder when the, last the 30th of Frostfall. Ask Esbern... What he knows on the 30th of Frostfall. All right. So, I encountered a dragon on the way over here, and I am still not used to this whole dragonborn business. It's impossible for me to believe, but yet it seems true. Tell me, what is so important about me being dragonborn? The Blades have always guarded and guided the dragonborn, but we'd forgotten why. Now our purpose is clear. I'm all that's left of the Blades, and you're the Dragonborn. Together, we're going to stop these dragons if we have to put every last one of them back in the ground. You are very determined. <laughs> and I <laughs> should not be as surprised. You are a Blade. But tell me, what happened to the Blades? Why are you on the run? The Thalmor happened. They've been hunting down every Blade they can find for the past 30 years. Thanks to the White Gold Concordat, they've been able to operate throughout the Empire with impunity. The White Gold Concordant? Concordat, what is that? The Great War. Only 30 years passed in already ancient history to most people. It seems to me like it just ended. It's never really ended for me. But to answer your question, the White Gold Concordat was the fancy name they put on the peace treaty between the Empire and the Thalmor. It ended the war and saved the Empire to fight another day. Also trampled on the sacred name of Talos, and gave the Thalmor free reign to stamp out Talos' worship throughout the Empire. Okay. And no one has ever really explained this to me. Who are the Thalmor? Hmm, there's no simple answer to that. You want the long version or the short version? The long version, of course. The more that I know, the more we can fight them. If they are indeed the enemy, which it seems so that they are. They're the rulers of the Aldmeri Dominion. 
what used to be the imperial provinces of Somerset Isle and Valinwood. The Thalmor take the arrogance of high elves to the extreme. They believe they are the rightful rulers of all of Tamriel. For a century or more, the Thalmor had been picking away at the Empire. Valinwood was the first, then the province of elsewhere. But even the Blades didn't see the Great War coming. We underestimated the Thalmor, and they destroyed us. So perhaps their next target is Skyrim. Or perhaps even to take over the entire empire itself. I see. Do you need something? So, no I do not, Delphine. At this time I will go to Riften and seek out this Esbern. And we shall do that immediately. But first, I cannot work without food in my belly, and so I will get a room. We got rooms and food. Drink, too. Sure thing. It's yours for a day. Thank you. I'll show you to your room, right this way. anything else you need. Thank you. And Mala will take rest here and we will meet up with her and as usual her companion. Look at Joran. Oh, he's so awesome. <laughs> this, I have to say, this let's play without Inigo and Joran mm, would not be half as, amaz as amazing and, and uh, wonderful as it is. But well, at least I think it is. Let me know if you think so. <laughs> uh, by leaving a comment. And as you'll notice, comments are turned off on YouTube. But you can comment over on Reddit. It is easy, free, simple to uh, get an account. And join us over at the party there. It's a lot nicer to comment over there. Um, and there's a really nice community of just a channel viewers who are ready to greet you and say hi and so come on and join the party and that's at reddit.com forward slash r forward slash the jessa channel and as far as this episode is concerned if you liked it let me know by hitting that thumbs up button below and encouraging me and if you loved it join the party as i mentioned the ever-growing party and subscribe i'll see you back here in Skyrim, in Riverwood, as we make our way back down to Riften in the next episode. As always, I want to thank you so much for watching. Get every new Jessa Channel video right in your email inbox. Subscribe, then from your YouTube homepage, click Manage subscriptions, then check email with new uploads. And thanks for watching.